Terminator Dark Fate is directed by Tim Miller and stars Arnold Schwarzenegger and Melinda Hamilton reprising their roles from the original Terminator films. I was really looking forward to this film. Uh, apparently it was supposed to be a direct sequel to Terminator 2, so it's acknowledging the events of Terminator 1 and 2 while ignoring Terminator 3, Terminator Salvation, and Terminator Genesis. Uh, so basically what that means is those are films that take place in separate timelines, and this is its own timeline, so this is basically the third film in the actual Terminator films, which I have no problem with whatsoever. I actually prefer Terminator 1 and Terminator 2. Even though I own all the movies, I probably should just own Terminator 1 and Terminator 2 because those are the best. The other movies, they're not good. Terminator 3 is okay, but it's just a copy of Terminator 2 with some cringe moments and some really sexual jokes. <laughs> Terminator Salvation was directed by Mick G, the director of Charlie's Angels. I don't even need to go into why that's a, a, a big no-no. And Terminator Genesis just messes up everything. It's just, it's cool that Arnold Schwarzenegger returned for this franchise in Terminator Genesis, but unfortunately, that movie kind of ruined a lot of things and kind of retconned the entire franchise and everything that we really loved about it. And it kind of erases Terminator 2, which is one of the greatest movies of all time. Like... Argumentally, it is one of the best sci-fi action sequels. That is how you do a sequel. Terminator 2, I hold that movie to like such a high regard. Terminator 2 is just like one of my favorite movies of all time, hands down. So I was really excited because, you know, Terminator Dark Fate, it was going back to its radar right roots and it was directed by Deadpool's Tim Miller. So I was looking forward to this. I know everybody was questioning the trailers and everything, but I was like, this this should be somewhat good. This is actually probably going to be like, probably not as good as Terminator 2, but should be probably in the top three, right? Ah, so let me just, <laughs> um, this movie bombed last weekend. Uh, I actually just saw it this week and it wasn't because I, you know, I wanted to go see it, but I had work and everything. When going into this film, I thought it was going to be like maybe the, one of the best Terminator films like, since Terminator 2. In some ways, it is, but I really wouldn't rank it in the top three. And I can't believe I'm saying this. I would probably watch Terminator 3 more than Terminator Dark Fate because that film's actually entertaining. And even though it has a lot of cringe moments and a lot of, you know, scenes that probably shouldn't be there, and basically... The movie is a copy of Terminator 2 and makes fun of that movie in scenes like where he puts on the glasses and everything, but at least it's still a watchable film. There's a lot of good action set pieces where in this, there is some really good action. But unfortunately, the action is broke into parts. The first portion of the film, there's a lot of action, and I was on board for sure. But then as the movie progresses, it actually takes a lot of time with exposition. It's almost like they had like action set pieces then exposition, then action set pieces and exposition. And you know, you could argumentably say like, you know, that's any given movie where like after an action sequence happens, there's exposition and then we go to the next action sequence, but it happens a lot in this film. And the exposition is so much to take in and really takes its time that it's almost leveled and not natural in a sense. A lot of people who are reviewing this film already are really going into spoilers like immediately because the first scene in the film is a major spoiler. So this is what I'm gonna do for this review because after seeing the film, I'm already realizing why people are going directly into spoilers. I am gonna be talking about what I generally feel about the film and then once I get into spoilers, I will tell you guys because I can't talk about this film without going to spoilers because there's just so many complications with the story and what they decide to do here that I have to go into it. But I can go into general things that I liked and then yeah, we'll get into that other stuff. So not only is Arnold Schwarzenegger back, but Linda Hamilton is back. We have not seen her in a while and she is still a badass. Uh, I really liked her scenes a lot, especially a lot of the scenes that we saw in the trailer on the bridge and just, she's just so good. Her character has progressed since the first Terminator film. And once you find out the reasoning why she is the way that she is in this film, it really adds a lot more character depth. And I just, as much as I didn't like what they did to her backstory and the events that she experiences in the past, I did understand and it was enjoyable to see how she takes all of this past trauma and basically goes out to hunt Terminators. I really enjoyed that portion of the film, even though, like I said, I didn't enjoy why she was doing it and the story that is like 
put into place. I loved Linda Hamilton in this film. Why has she not been in other Terminator films? Like, thank you for bringing her back. James Cameron is a producer, so maybe he had something to do with it. I don't know. And obviously Arnold Schwarzenegger is back. He's been back since Terminator Genesis. And I really, really liked him in this film. I can't really go into much information as to why I liked him until we get into spoilers. But let's just say that like his presence is really cool. And just seeing like this experienced Terminator, like after he's done a deed in the film, it was a really interesting plot point. And everybody else who is new to this franchise is doing a really good job. The first scene where they're running away from this new Terminator, it's very thrilling and suspenseful. And I bought everyone's like urgency. I, I understood like, okay, we got to get out of here. We have to get away from this Terminator. So in terms of like the performances, everybody's doing a really good job. Unfortunately, it's what they decide to do with this franchise that I'm very disappointed in. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into spoilers. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to be talking about what happens in the beginning of the film that really, really, really affects this franchise. And I don't understand why they did this because they really don't know the fans and what the fans like about this series. So let's go ahead and just talk about what they do in Terminator Dark Fate. Okay, so they kill off John Connor. Mm. Okay, so for... I don't understand why they did this. I mean, it, it adds a lot of character depth to Sarah Connor, which I really, like I said, I really liked in this film, but it's like they are so unaware of what the fans like about this series. And, you know, if the whole point of this film is to bring back past characters into this, like, new film in this nostalgic way, why on earth would you kill off one of, the, like the best characters that you follow in this franchise. This whole franchise is about John Connor, okay? The whole Terminator series has been leading up to the point where John Connor becomes the leader of the resistance and he fights the Terminators with the last, you know, human survivors. That has what Terminator has always been about. It's almost like Terminator 1 and Terminator 2 have been prequels in a sense because, you know, time travel and everything. And it's all been building up to the point of John Connor being this leader of resistance. We had Terminator Salvation, and unfortunately that wasn't good, and it tried to do that idea. But even in that film, he wasn't in a position of power. He was still like having to like, you know, talk to government officials, and he wasn't who we necessarily wanted him to be at that time. He was still this just regular soldier, but he was progressing in that film. And a lot of the problems that we have in this film, specifically Terminator Dark Fate, is that people have been waiting for John Connor to be this guy that the other Terminator films have been talking about. And we have never fully gotten him. And what really takes me off too, is that this is a movie that erases every bad thing about Terminator 3, Terminator 4, and Terminator 5, and acknowledges the good Terminator films. And th this, this is a starting point, essentially. And you kill off one of our favorite characters. It's like they don't know the fans. Let's talk about the scene specifically. Uh, the scene where he gets killed, this is him as a kid right after the events of Terminator 2. The de-aging technology is actually really, really good. I was very surprised. I was looking at Melinda Hamilton, young Melinda Hamilton in the film, and I was trying to find things that I was wanting to dislike about the de-aging, and I was trying really hard. And you can see some little things if you squint your eyes, but like it it's really good. Like, I was genuinely surprised. And I think it's just because Tim Miller is really good at producing stuff that is body CGI oriented, like Deadpool. Uh, you know, we had that, you know, Deadpool short film that released before the actual Deadpool film. And then we have Love, Death, and Robots on Netflix. So he's really good at that kind of technology. So in terms of, like, how it looks, it looks super good. But it shouldn't exist because it's it's going to divide fans. It's definitely like they, it's so funny because they spent a whole lot of money on something that people didn't want to see. And then we skip to the future and we see this new girl named Danny who's targeted by this Terminator. It's like a T-1000, but apparently it's from a different company. It, it's yet to be revealed like what's actually going on here. And then she is rescued by this woman who is not a Terminator, but like a person who has augmentation. I actually bought into this. I was like, okay, so I mean, if Terminators can exist in the future, I mean, they can probably augment humans in the future. So I liked that idea. I, I was happy that it wasn't another subplot where we have a Terminator that thinks it's human. Um, so I 
enjoyed that. I, I thought it was very interesting. And then we see everybody getting together and we see Linda Hamilton save them and join them on their journey. And it's after this first portion of the film where we have this uh, highway scene and all this action taking place in the first portion of the film, where I start to realize that the film is really, really, really trying to find a reason to exist. So basically, the reason why these Terminators are coming back in time is because there was a new company. This isn't Skynet, it's a company called Legion. And I just feel as though that is the laziest piece of writing in this film, where basically it's just new people. And I understand why they did this because in Terminator 2 they basically they stopped Skynet. They they you know killed everything that had to do with Skynet including the T800. So I understand their thinking process as to why or how they could do this. Uh but it's like I said it's just it's a different company yet it's the same looking robots. It's kind of a coincidence. You have, like, this different company who, yes, has made, like, you know, dangerous artificial intelligence, but the robots look exactly like Terminators, and in, in first glance, you would think, like, oh, this is, like, you know, some kind of other portion of Skynet, but it's a different company that made robots that look exactly like Terminators. I don't know, and what, I don't remember this portion of the film at all, but I think uh, Mackenzie Davis's character, Grace, I think she actually, I don't know, I'm not gonna go see the film again to like confirm this. I think she actually refers to them as Terminators. I don't know, but if she did in the film, that also doesn't make any sense because it's a different company. You've already acknowledged that it's a different company, so why do they look like Terminators? Why are they called Terminators? I, I can't like, you know, state if that's true or not, but they look like Terminators. It's a different company. Why do these look like the same models from the other films. It doesn't make any sense. And then they meet Arnold Schwarzenegger and I actually really enjoyed this subplot as well because essentially it states what happens to a Terminator once it completes its mission. So in the beginning of the movie, it kills John and then it goes off and does its own thing. It's like, it has this mindset of what now? What do I do? And it grows a conscious and actually starts a family. I thought that was a really interesting portion of the story where it's like, yeah, what do they do after they complete their mission? Like, they're in the past. They can't go back to the future. So do they just, like, do they live there? That was a really interesting plot of the film. And I really did like the banter between him and Sarah Connor because you understand that, like, you know, this thing killed her son. So this was some really good storytelling, even though we I, I really didn't like the beginning of the story. I understand why they did it because it really adds depth to the movie, but at the same time, it shouldn't really even exist because it's stupid. <laughs> but it's still cool within the film because it adds a little bit more character development, so I really like that. Um, unfortunately, I have to talk about this part that really just blew my mind that this was in a Terminator film, and that is SJW bullcrap. I don't usually talk about this in movie reviews because I'm very supportive of like new ideas and expressing, you know, progression in films. But when it's very obvious in a film, especially in a masculine franchise like Terminator, it it really got under my skin and let's let's go ahead and talk about it. So basically this augmented human named Grace uh leads Danny to believe that she is the mother of the savior of the future. She is led to believe that she is like Sarah Connor from the 80s, except this is now. This is like, she is Sarah Connor. They leave her to believe that she is Mother Mary. And in the third act of the film, it's actually revealed that the Terminator is after her because of her. It's not because she is going to bear a son. It's because she is the target. Um, now, I... I it's so stupid. Basically, it's cool in the sense because the audience kind of recognizes that like, oh, okay, that's a neat twist. It's only relevant towards the audience though. The audience assumed that because of the last Terminator films because Sarah Connor was the mother Mary of John. So that was a cool little twist on us, but within the movie's ranks, it doesn't make sense the only reason why it's there is because to add that twist for the audience. But in the realm of the movie, you would just state, oh, I'm an augmented human from the future who has come to protect you from this Terminator because you are about to get killed. 
That's it. You would just state that you're there for that person. You wouldn't state some lie about, oh, you're going to have a kid. And in the future, and I'm, I'm only stating this because Sarah Connor is here. That doesn't make sense. No, you would just say like, oh, I'm here to protect you alone. The reason why it's added in this film is to have this line specifically. You're not the mother of some man in the future. Okay, look, I love lead female performers and everything. Like, I, I love movies that, like, bring forth really cool female characters. Aliens is one of the best movies that ever did that. Terminator 2 is one of the best films that ever did that. Like, so I have no problem whatsoever with Terminator Dark Fate having lead female characters. But if you're going to throw this stuff at us where you're basically hating on men with like little subtext like that where it's pretty obvious of, of what you're doing you're you're basically pointing fingers at your main demographic this is a masculine franchise that starred arnold schwarzenegger in the 80s a bodybuilder who went out and beat up a bunch of people killed a bunch of people and this is a rated r masculine franchise and the themes of it are still there. This I love and appreciate how this is rated R. And I love the grit of the movie. But you don't need to be adding stuff in here that basically shuns men. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I think that's another thing that you know I want to go back to is this franchise doesn't understand why we like the franchise. We like the franchise because we also like the backstory of John Connor. And we want to see that progress. This movie is like, screw it. We don't care about John Connor. We're adding this. I don't know. Like, this movie really pissed me off when it got to that portion. The beginning of the film, I really liked. I was actually thinking like, what is everyone's deal? Like, this is actually like really good. And then it gets to like the exposition and the unneeded exposition where it's like, oh, you're the mother of this son in the future. No, just kidding. Like, I just wanted to do this. And like, it's just... No, like, yeah. And also something I want to point out too is that the main plot of this film, when we get to the third act, is literally just them. It's revealed that it's just them running away from the Terminator. That's it. That's the like just protecting her, Danny, and surviving this Terminator. Usually in the newer Terminator films, besides Terminator 1, the, the newer Terminator films have this other agenda where it's like, okay, we have to protect you, but we have to kill Skynet. We have to, like, destroy this technology. In this film, it doesn't add anything else. It's like they find Arnold Schwarzenegger, and that's it. It's like, we, we can find someone to help us. And then when they find him, it's like, what now? Oh, we still have to protect you. So it's like, the film struggles for a reason to exist and be different from the other movies. And it's dependent on the fact that this is 2019 and we're adding social commentary to it. This should not be in Terminator films at all. I was very disappointed with this film and I would like to see, no, no, we're done. We're done with Terminator. Like, which is a shame for me to say that because I love Terminator. I grew up with Terminator. And for me as a longtime fan who owns all the movies and who wants to see this franchise progress after seeing this film, that was supposed to fix the franchise. It's like, I, no, we're done. We're done here. So yes, guys, that was my review to Terminator Dark Fate. Comment down below what you guys thought of this film if you've seen it yet. Like this video, share it, and please subscribe to Pixel Talk if you haven't yet for more movie reviews, trailer reactions, gaming content, and so on. Thank you guys so much. I am Corbett Stucky, and this is Pixel Talk.